Hi, this is Imad Al Alam, Biomed Researchers, Middle East Medical Information Center and Directory, and Epilepsy Awareness Program founder and publisher. In the next few minutes, I will take you on a tour to understand and implement the 1020 electrode international placement system. We will have an overview, we will understand the method, the implementation, and much, much more. Before we start, let us have a short idea about the 1020 International Electrode Placement System. It is the most widely used method to describe the placement of electrodes at specific intervals along the head. And originally it consisted of 21 electrodes as we can count it here. Each electrode site has a letter to identify the lobe. So this is each electrode site. It has a letter to identify the lobe along with a number or another letter to identify the hemispheric location, either the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere. The names of the electrode sites uses alphabetical abbreviations that identify the lobe or area of the brain to which electrodes refer. So if we take FPZ as an example, the F refers to the front, P to the polar, so we'll call it front to polar. If we take, for example, C3, C stands for central, if we take T, it stands for temporal. If we take O, it stands for occipital. If we take P, it stands for the parietal. And the label Z points to the electrode site in the, in the midline of the head. For example, CZ refers to the midline central region of the head. So what do we always require to do the EEG recording. In addition to knowing the 1020 electrode placement system and connecting the electrodes clearly to the patient head, we do require some items. Cold tape, tissues, non-toxic water, base marker, tape measure, of course in centimeters, EEG electrodes, electrogel, and neuroprep. We will start the electrode placement by marking the four anatomical bony landmarks. These are landmarks where we will not connect electrodes to them, but we will use them as a starting point for the measurements. The four landmarks will be, the first one will be the nasen, and nasen usually is the point between the forehead and the nose. The second landmark, which we will mark, is the inion, and inion is the lowest point of the skull from the back of the head and is normally indicated by a prominent pump. And we will mark the left pericular and right preocular areas. The left and right preocular areas, for those who does not know how where it is located, it's near to the center of the air length in front of the small skin ridge in front of the air, as indicated here. So now, once we define these four locations, nasen, inion, right preocular, and left preocular, we can start and proceed to the next step of measurement. On the next step, we will measure the distance from the nasen to the inion in a tape measure in centimeters, and we will divide this distance by two. So if we say, for example, the distance from the nasen to inion here is 32 centimeters, if we divide it by two, it is 16 centimeters. So 16 centimeters will be the point of CZ. or central zero zone. So now we have established the central zero or central zone and we can proceed in uh, connect, connecting the, the remaining electrodes on the central area from nasen to inion. 10% of the dot total distance we calculated area from nasen to inion which we said as an example 32 centimeters will be 3 to 3.2 cm which will be measured from the nasen towards central and point and the point reach will be marked as FPZ. So we will measure 10% from here which is 3.2 cm as an example and the point reach will be the will be marked as FPZ or frontopolar zone. The same thing applies to the inion. We will measure 10% of the total distance we assumed earlier which was 32 cm and that will be 3.2 cm and the point reach will be OZ or occipital zone. Now if you look at this figure we will have as marked earlier FPZ, CZ and OZ. Now to mark the FZ 
and PZ, we will measure 20% from the frontal polar zone or from FPZ location towards the central zone and the distance reached will be the point of FZ. So 20% out of three, 32 centimeters, something like 6.4 centimeters. And the same applies to the distance from OZ to PZ. The distance from FZ to, to CZ and from PZ to CZ should read automatically 20% of the total distance measure or as we said as an example here 6.4 centimeters so once we connect all these electrodes we will have the central area from nasen to inion electrodes connected already now we will move on to the electrodes from the left auricular to the right auricular so as we have marked earlier this is uh, peracular point which should be marked for both left and right ear we can see it here and as well we can see it here and we can see it here and now we will measure the distance from the right peracular to the left peracular the distance obtained let us say for example if the obtained distance is 30 centimeters 10 percent of this distance will be measured to mark the t4 region so 10% out of 30 centimeters, if we say it as an example, would be 3 centimeters. So if we measure 3 centimeters from the left, right, sorry, right percular point here, we will have the T4 point. And then we will measure 20% of the total distance obtained to mark the C4 region or C4 electrode connection. And 20% out of 30, as an example, it will be 6 centimeters. So if we measure 6 centimeters from T4, towards the CZ we will have the C4 location and the same thing applies to C4 to CZ which should read at 20% of the total distance measured from right peracular to, to the left peracular we will take 10% of measurements from the left peracular towards the CZ and the point reach will be T3 20% will be measured from T3 to C3 and the distance from C3 to CZ should be at 20% of the total distance measured earlier by now as we could see here we have finished the central zone electrodes from nasen to the inion and from left peracular to the right peracular if i review it for you again a mark should be placed on the left peracular as well as the right peracular and then the distance from the left peracular to the right peracular should be measured passing through the cz from the left preocular point, 10% is the measured is measured to mark the T3 point. From T3 point, 20% is measured to mark the C3. Now, from C3 to CZ, the measured distance should be 20%. Another 20% is taken from CZ to C4 as well as from C4 to T4. From T4 to the right preocular point marked earlier, the measured distance should be 10%. The next step for us is to measure the circumference of the head. The circumference of the head is measured from the occipital point OZ through temporal point T3 and temporal point T4 and the frontopolar FPZ. So this is the circumference of the head from FPZ to T3, from OZ to T4, then back again to the FPZ. The longitudinal measurements for FP1 is located in the circumference, which is 5% of the total length of the circumference to the left of FPZ. The same thing for the FP2. The longitudinal measurement for FP2 is located in the circumference. It is 5% of the total length of the circumference to the left of, to the right, sorry, of FPZ. The longitudinal measurement for F7, T3, T5, O1, O2, T6, T4, F8, and FP2 are at the distance of 10% of the circumference except from FP2 to FZ, FPZ, and from FP1 to FPZ, and from OZ 
to O2 and from O0 to O1. The measured distance should be 5% of the total distance measured for the circumference of the head. As we can see here, that our EEG electrodes are almost placed except this area. So let us know how to connect these electrodes. F3 electrode is placed at the point of insert uh, at the point of intersection of two lines drawn by joining FP1 to C3 and by joining F7 to FZ. The same thing applies for F4, is which is placed at the point of intersection of two lines drawn by joining FP2 with C4 and F8 with FZ. The same applies to P3. P3 electrode is placed at the point of intersection of two lines drawn, drawn by joining O1 to C3 and T5 to PZ. P4 electrode is placed at the point of intersection of two lines drawn by joining O2 to C4 and T6 to PZ. We may have two, two electrodes placed either on the air lob or in the mastoid area which we call them for the left side A1 and for the right side A2. So by now as you can notice all our electrodes are connected either from nasal to inion or from right peripheral to the right to the left peripheral or the circumference of the head and the electrodes in between here as indicated. What is remaining for us is to connect the extra electrodes which bears importance like, such as the EUG, the EMG and the EECG electrodes. As shown here, EUG electrode placements are placed on each eye to determine the electrical activity caused by eye movements. ROC electrode is placed on the upper outer edge of the right eye, usually one centimeter out and one centimeter up from the outer canthus of the eye. The LOC electrode is placed on the lower outer edge of the left eye, usually one centimeter out and one centimeter down from the outer canthus of the eye. Both are referenced to the contralateral mastoid site, A1 or 2 or A2, or sometimes indicated as M1 and M2. For the EMG chin electrode placement, it is placed on the mentalis and submentalis muscle. So for the EMG, it's placed on the mentalis and submentalis muscle. For the ECG or AKG, it records the electrical activity of the heart, such as the rate and the rhythm, and electrodes are placed just beneath the right clavicle, collarbone, and the mid clavicle and the mid clavicular line on the left. So by now, we would have connected all the 1020 electrodes as indicated on the 1020 International Electrode Placement System. As a necessity which has, which has urged later on, the 1020 International System of Connection of Electrodes has been extended and called Extended 1020 System or sometimes called as the 10% or 10 to 10 system. As we said earlier, the original 1020 standard consisted only of 21 electrodes. Sometimes it is desirable to place more electrodes in a certain area of interest. In 1985, Chatrian suggested a logical extension of the 1020 system. The original system places electrodes at distances of 10% and 20% as we have seen earlier along certain contours of the scalp. Chatrian simply extended this by placing electrodes at every 10% along the medial lateral contours and by introducing new contours in between the existing ones. The, the additional electrode positions of the TIN system have been endorsed as the standard of the American Electroencephalographic Society and the International Federation of Societies of Electroencephalography and Clinical Neurophysiology. In the extended 1020 system, or 10% or 10 to 10 system, the number of electrodes were increased from 10 to 1 electrodes to 74 electrodes, as we can see on this picture and graph. In the next graphs, I'm going to show you the locations of 32 electrode connections, as you can count them here, and as well, the location of 64 electrode connections 
which can be used in the long time monitoring of patients and as well as the locations of 128 electrode connections as shown on this diagram.